All right, guys, welcome back here to the Caster Bash. The official show is over, but the Clash of the Eagles will continue. That's right. As the Red and Green Orb are going to play a final game, which was not part of our plan, but that doesn't matter. Uh, since they are 1 1, normally they would have never been 1 1 in the first place if we would only be a best of one. But Bitter isn't here, so they finished 1 1, and now Red Cat, I would really like to play a final game. The only reason, guys, why I said let's do it off camera is not because, as I quote someone from chat, Scumbag rather than wants to do it <laughs> off camera. No, we actually. Despite us just running the show and there's not really, this is not like an NHL show, so there's not that much production in it. We still need people to run the cameras and they actually have a lot of stuff to do for tomorrow for the fall. So That's I right. didn't want to make it harder for them while we said this show will be really short, I promise. And then actually they, they have to do it for a long time, but they said they wouldn't mind. So here we go. I, but yeah. It's no actually good guy Roddy. No <laughs> harm in 10. Yeah, actually I was just trying to do a nice thing. Really. <laughs> Perhaps not for you guys, but I would have updated uh -huh. it. Would have been a tweet cast. Well, <laughs> a production crew really wanted it to happen. We want it to happen yeah. too, and viewers want it to happen. So here it is Akalon Wastes for game number three between Greetorp and Red. I like this, man. This is one of the new maps of Hardest Farm that I like the most, I think. Uh, I think it's a very fun map. So you play PvZ on because it's super uh, easy to take your third base, and after that, you can take your fourth kind of comfortably as well. But it's also not that like there are like no options for Zerg to do anything about it. There are a couple of ways to perhaps be annoying with Mudas or even uh, have a Nidus go up somewhere because if Protoss would be up to four bases, you can go Nidus over here, perhaps over here, or yeah. even over here in the main. And it's very annoying for Protoss to dance all around. So it is a cool map and lots of cool stuff is possible. Yeah, just like you said, uh, this map opens up because, you know, for a while the map is ooh, in base pylon. Yep. Potential gateway expand. Um, one thing that maps have really seen a recent trend is like rotational expansion, right? Like yeah. you always keep rotating in a circle. But this one you're expanding more in like a cone, so yeah. it makes you more vulnerable in that regard. And I think that was actually really cool. And I actually like the version that GSL has made, Aklon Flats, where they open up the third and make some other paths a little bit more viable. Uh, what's the difference? The, the towers expire after oh seven yeah, minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I some know paths that. are opened up a little bit more. Yeah, okay. I w for a second, I was like, huh, this is something I really missed, but I didn't know that about this on Watch. That is cool. So, Greetorp is going for a gateway first. Yeah, I'm very surprised here. Greetorp opening up with the gate, so he's going to play a completely different style this time. He's even going to take gas, so it might just be a one gate expand, uh, and perhaps after that, he's going to follow it up with a little bit of gateway pressure. I am not sure, but I don't think Red is going to be too worried about this. Like, the most important thing for Zerg is always, whenever you play against an opening like this, do not go on autopilot mode. Do not do everything the same as you would do against Forge first, because the timings are completely different. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to take an extractor a little bit quicker, mine that 100 gas, get your speed links out, or even throw down a Roach one, even if you didn't want to do it normally. If you see the opening like this, just do it, because in the end of the day, you're still going to come out ahead uh, economically, even when you don't cut every corner and you don't play super greedy. Yeah, and th I mean, Warp Gate comes in much earlier. You're allowed to get your production up much quicker. You're not going to have as strong as economy, but the timing to pressure. In fact, Greetorp's going for double gas. Yeah. Uh, I did I did talk to him about an opening that has been experimented with Todd a little bit. And Todd says that he likes going gateway expand in PvZ to put pressure with the Mothership Core very early on. But that way you can uh, c snipe some queens and maybe some drones while taking map control. I see, but the problem with this is right now that they're like, for a second he even only had 10 probes on minerals, that's absolutely nothing. Uh, now he's on 12, even though Red is only here at 14. Red is getting a quicker gas, though, so Red is adjusting to what he sees. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, that Mothership Core is being thrown or boosted out. At least I want to say it was, because it was going so quick on the production tab, yeah. so I was like, it is getting thrown <laughs> boosted out, and then I was like, hmm, actually, it's not. Oh, it, uh, is. it was. Oh, in the start? Yes. Oh, okay. See, I, <laughs> I was like, am I hallucinating or... What is this? So quick. Uh, so maybe you were spot on. The Mothership Core is going to make its way over to the other side of the map. I don't know. I do have a hard time um, imagining a world where this opening really justifies itself. But then again, I haven't played that much out of this one yet. Uh, it's Well, usually you pressure with Stalker Mothership Core because mm -hmm. you use the Stalker to poke. And if Zergling tries to surround your Stalkers, then you just have the Mothership Core camp above it. And you pick a nice spot. Uh, from there, you can deny watchtowers for a very long time because Mothership Core can always sweep the Zerglings off. And you're allowed to do a lot of uh, shenanigans, like four gate uh, t timing with a plus one with a forge, or even a three gate if you kind of squeeze it in really tight. And your probe can get in really easily because there's no Zergling controlling the towers. That's kind of the thought process behind it. And from there, you can kind of tech. But I'm really curious to see how Greetor does it because he's going with just a Mothership Core. I guess it's the scout. Scouting Mothership Core? Mothership Core beats the Queen in a one-on-one fight, right? Does it? 
Yeah, I think it does. Ah. Just slightly more HP and it attacks a little bit quicker. Oh? Uh, well, now it won't no anymore as he's getting a couple of free hits off already. Uh, Sentry is over here tickling one of the overlords. So yeah, Grito is using this to scout, I guess. He might have to, to recall. Careful, man. Uh, I guess he's not losing it, but taking real damage on it already is yeah. quite annoying. But mm. the most importantly thing that Greetorp hasn't scouted the third base from Red is... He did see the drone leave when the Mothership Core was flying over here. He did see the drone heading into the direction, if he was watching, that is. That's right. Meanwhile, Greetorp is trying to expand slowly but surely. He is going to place his gateways on the high ground instead of the low ground. Usually you use it to supplement wow. it. Greetorp really trying to keep everything under float. Is he going to just cancel the Nexus and go for a classic 4 geek? <laughs> yeah, that would be that awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh, speed is ready, so he's perhaps going to try to force a couple of force fields. There are not that many links on the map. There are only 14 links. Certainly, the moment the Mothership Core is going to make its way back or one additional warping. Greetorp is going to be more than fine from now on. The biggest thing is, though, Red is still um, yeah, forcing Greetorp to be slightly worried. He's down 15 workers already at the 7-minute mark. That is the biggest problem with openings like this. Yes. Uh, he does have sentries, but he uh, i mean he's not able to really punish. Red only has 14 zerglings, but he's pretty safe. He, he does control the watchtowers. You should use the Mothership Core right around now to clear the towers constantly for a zerg into an uncomfortable position. But Greetor is playing this really passive because I guess hes he doesn't have much SimCity, so it's not like he can block off easily. No, he, he's really going to have to rely heavily on those force fields. Oh. I do agree. Red's going to perhaps try to make a small run by. Andre but Andre is walling off, Kev. So he's going to attack. Yeah. yeah, he has five gates right now. Yes, he does. He's going to go for a, a, a huck attack. Did he just use Revelation? Uh, use Purify onto his Nexus in case they're ah, run by. Ah, okay. So there's only he wants to deny any kind of Overlord scout. This is kind of cool <laughs> to try to completely deny it. But the thing is, he hasn't cleared out the towers. And this is a big problem as well. So <laughs> he's going to scout just everything. Uh, he's going to see that it's going to be a full wall of as well. So from this moment on, uh, Red is going to need to produce only units. At this moment, it's only 12 army supply for Red. Okay, seven roaches on the way. Um, oh, Red is doing this so well. Picking up that probe as well. This is going to be uh, the you know, nearest by reinforcements for Greeter. That's going to be a small problem. He does have that backup pylon over here. Uh, he even in some zealots all the way at home. I think he forgot about this backup pylon. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, Greetorp's going to have to uh, have some reinforcement zealots come all yeah. the way back, but this third base is going to be under heavy, heavy siege. Greetorp can kind of lock himself in with the sentries and keeping the militia core back to kind of keep it as like an observer to spot for anything. Uh, there are going to be so many roaches on the map. There's a couple of good forces here by uh, Greetorp, but he doesn't even have that much DPS. He's probably going to end up losing at least a zealot or two. Those forces are good, but even if he takes out this base, he's not going to be ahead. Uh, the opposite is true, even even if he takes out this base, he's still going to be quite far behind. Yes, he can recall this army out, but... Mm, yeah, he's going to try to continue to drop force fields, but the way he's doing it is spending a lot of energy, too. It's not like he's backing into a corner. Zealots are not able to even get in. Doesn't even have a very good reinforcement pile on it. It's all the way back, but mm. Greetorp just recalls immediately. Yeah, but he's content with taking the third base. The biggest problem is, though, he's still quite far behind right now. He has absolutely zero follow-up tech, as we can see. These five gates, and he even has to kill this pile, and it's his only uh, production right now. There's no Robo, no Twilight. There's not even a forge for upgrades for then, and he is still down 24 workers. So, yes, you took out that hatchery, but as Mr. Bitter always likes to say, at the end of the day, a hatchery is 300. only 300 minerals. It's nothing more than that. If you don't kill 20 drones uh, with it, it is just not worth it to... to yeah, really focus or invest a lot in trying to take out a single hatchery. Uh, I really do feel like if he, if Red didn't know it was coming, he could have done a little bit more, but Red... Oh, nice force field to catch a couple of those units. Uh, but Red was able to prepare for it very nicely, and yeah. now he's getting everything. Look at what he's getting also. He's getting Ventral Sacks, mm -hmm. as well as Overlord Speed. That's a very smart thing to do, because he knows his opponent will not have the mobility nor the tech field to answer direct roaches in his face. Totally agree, uh, Dan. Without uh, Blink Stalkers or perhaps without long-range units like either a Colossus or even maybe an Immortal or two is super, super hard to split up your army properly and deal with drops. Uh, I think the moment that drop is ready, he's going to drop a ton of roaches in the main base. That is pretty much curtains for Greetorp. Uh, Hydra is also thrown into the mix as well, which is a really nice touch. Greetorp trying to move out a little bit, maybe mm. threaten another push. I think as soon as he has enough energy for recall, he's, gonna he's just going to kind of continue to do this kind of push. But Rhett... I mean, he's. I don't feel like he's going to lose much, and then he's going to force a recall, unless Greetorp gets like the most amazing Squirtle force fields. <laughs> he's going to need uh, at least three waves of those, I think, because right now he is down. Uh, oop, well, literally uh, double the army supply. It's 36 against 71, so with one extra set of Ling, <laughs> of Ling, well, one Ling. Yeah. 
Yeah, one set of links. One set of links. One Can pair of links. There you go. Nice. It would literally be double. Uh, Greetup sees the army as well. He realized there's something uh, or there's nothing he can do about that army right now. Even trying to force it off is just too risky because the moment too many roaches stream through, which is very likely on creep, he's going to lose quite a few sentries. So he's just going to go home, try to stabilize. He, uh, stabilize. he did get two forges and he got the robotics facility. And he's having a twilight concert as well. But uh, as we already mentioned, Ventral Sex is ready. The overlords are heading down the way and it's going to be so hard for Greetup to defend at two places at once. It's interesting that Gritorb is taking this expansion also right below his natural. We've seen a lot of people yeah. do that instead of taking the one by the rocks. Kev. What do you think about that expansion mm, position? Uh, and as a Zerg, I think it makes sense. As a Protoss, I am not too sure about it. One of the first times I've seen it, but as I said, I haven't really played that much lately in Hunter's Farm, so I shouldn't open my mouth too much. Also, Gritorb's in, in a very open spot. He's going to need so many force fields to be able to cover up everything, prevent a complete flank. At seven force fields used, and he does have a pretty nice army to deal with this small amount, but again, he can't even defend his third base. Forced to cancel immediately, and, all and the that, that's just going to tell everything what's going to happen here. Yep, all the overlords are coming in as well. I don't think that Dritorp uh, practiced this strategy a whole lot. He probably just felt that it was going to be hard to pull the same thing off again against Red, so he wanted to surprise him with something else. But this game, uh, he was just too far down economically all the way from the start, and even after taking out that hatch, as we said, it's only 300 minerals. He was just too far down. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of overlords, a lot of them empty, but now Greetorp has to deal with it. He can't even force field away. He's trying, uh, Red's trying to also run by the oh natural. Red is still not dropping anything. I'm oh. a little bit surprised by this. Oh. Red, oh. what are you waiting for? Okay, there <laughs> we go. He starts dropping units one by one. Maybe with some excellent focus fire, Greetorp is actually able to survive here for a little longer. Uh, not enough space no. for the units to drop. Now Red's starting to get in. He's already killed off a lot of significant amount of units, but the army supply of Red is just yeah. too good. He's taking a fourth base. Third base is also under pressure by a single Zergling. Uh, Red didn't even drop all of his units, uh, but Greetorp can't handle it. GG! And the best of three goes to Liquid Red. The best of three, which had nothing on stake <laughs> besides Sprite, so Red is able and to honor. at least take out, the take out Andre in the best of three. But at the end of the day, Andre did win the game that mattered the most. That's right, and the first one. And costed Red 25 bucks as well. Uh, at the end of the day, of course, um, Red will still go home with $75 that he's going to get from us. But uh, Greetorp is going to have the absolute pleasure of casting uh, his game on Daybreak. Really, that was a really <laughs> neat uh, <laughs> little little trick, Andre, I think, with the recall. I, I was actually surprised he didn't clear out the towers more, though, with the Mothership core to prevent his Zerling from seeing it, because he saw it, and then he just made, like, t 30 roaches and just completely... Well, that's what you want, though. You want oh, you want a force? Yeah, units. yeah. I mean, I it's uh. always going to net results. If if he okay. makes preemptive roaches, it's, it's still going to be good for me. And I think oh. uh, if he... I mean, I guess there's this fine line where if he defends it straight up, it, he's going to be way, 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 way ahead. But I think normally, like, it's coming at a time, as soon as I see the third drone going out, where I can always do damage. I mean, you're not going to materialize a lot. It takes a lot okay. of time to actually get roaches. Think, if you're talking, like, seven, eight roaches, that's 200 gas. If you're off of two, uh, two what's it called? Extractors? Two extractors, that's 50 seconds. Roaches take 27 seconds. So you're looking at... A minute, oh. 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Them on the right timings. Uh, or the is he really timings. going to saturate his two gases while getting the super fast third the biggest at a good time? Probably not. So the biggest like problem is, though, uh, with the build in general, is just that even if you take out that hatchery, you are down 20 workers, and you have absolutely zero follow-up tech. Uh, so okay. You shouldn't, you shouldn't let the drones escape go. from the third. Sorry? You shouldn't let the drones escape from the third base. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes a big true. difference. Because like even after that's that true. fight, it was 54 yeah. against yeah, 34. Yeah, no, I felt very yeah. far behind at that point, and, and then I, I knew like I couldn't deny another third. I was just trying to poke around, make sure he's making units, mm -hmm. and uh, get Colossus and. Pray. Since you hosted that map, I thought you were just going to take three bases again. <laughs> 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 and you did something totally different. Yeah. I switch it up once in a while. Uh, right. I like that Red, <laughs> li tricky, I like that red adjusted on the spot. He saw yeah. uh, the gateway on the high ground and then just took his gas a little bit quicker. Because I, I was saying that in the previous games, right, you take your th your third base at like 340, 330, 340, which is a little bit different. You stop your first queen and go for the, the hatch before that. And mm -hmm. I was trying to punish it. Um, Aklon Waste, I know, is a little bit farther, so I was hoping that you are going to throw it down really, really early, not suspecting that I wasn't going for it, but I, I actually don't know the timings too well for your overlord getting over to my base mm. and seeing everything. Yeah, I wish sure. just in time. Yeah. Well, Red, I still hope that you had a great time. Uh, as we said already before where you came on Skype, uh, you do get 75 bucks from us, but you are going to have to cast <laughs> that lovely <laughs> Daybreak Rain. Hey, but Red, it's with me, yeah, man. It'll be, a, it'll be a pleasure, man. Yeah. yeah. I uh, can honestly say I found new respect for Ender's ability to play the game. Okay. Oh, thank Aww. you. So. 
Well, appreciate no, it. No, no love for Frodo and me. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No. Frodo, uh, he guys, played respect well. Uh, Rotterdam's uh, another uh, ladder, Protoss. Uh, yeah. Uh, Frodo almost killed me with Reapers. I mean, Frodo, <laughs> you didn't do very much, but you're you're good too. <laughs> well, it's oh, nice to know who your real friends are. <laughs> 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 I know which stream yeah. I'm gonna watch tonight, and it's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> no oh, YouTube okay. money for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Red, thank you very much. I hope you had a great time at the show. Any final words? Where can we follow you? I heard that you have a Twitter account. <laughs> like, yes, uh, I do have a Twitter account. It's at Waterdam08. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and uh, well, I will be streaming a lot, so follow me on Twitch slash Liquid Red. All right, That's thank it. you very much, Yoss, for coming right. out. We had a great time. Hopefully, the people at home had a great time. Please tweet at uh, Yoss as well. Of course, his Twitter is at Liquid Red. Uh, if you say, yeah, if you just want to say something nice, or if you want to make fun of him for losing a game, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, I, I honestly those think those like those aren't those comments aren't welcome. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Instant block. You no, know, seriously, between like all of us, and then Bitter can throw in. He's the wild card, but Froden, like he can really abuse a lot of the early game stuff, and I think your build orders are pretty pristine. And then, like, between us two, I think we can get, like, one game every single week. Yeah, uh, well, we'll try. Every we'll single try. week. Oh, you mean, like, you guys better get a game every yeah. single week. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get two games every week, Rotterdam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll try to make you look good from now on, right? We'll yeah. try to make you uh, be the holder of the personal yeah. record. That's right. Though. That's right. Only, d only yeah. dropping one map <laughs> against this amazing all star lineup sitting <laughs> over here. <laughs> we'll, go we'll go 4 0 against, like, TT1. No yeah. problem. We'll just invite him next time. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding, TT. Oh, Pyam is actually super good. I know, in he is really good in hearts. Anyways, thank you so thank much you for coming right. on the show, y'all. I hope you had fun. Uh, for us, there's a lot of work to do as we're going to host, of course, the polls tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. We really hope that you guys are going to check out our talk show. It's going to be fun. Throw in less words. Uh, it's good. Just tune into the Pulse. We cover lots of cool stuff. Our hot topic is going to be on region locking tournaments. Should yep. tournaments do it? How are the players going to like it? I think it's a lot of things <laughs> warrant for discussion. See you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. Andre? Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. It was a, a ragtag team today, but it's awesome. Uh, thanks to the people back there, Elliot, Kylie, and Mike, mm -hmm. who are always there at every single NASL thing, mm -hmm. and I believe they'll be doing the CSL as well. They're uh, oh, that's currently right. gaining some notoriety and uh, stepping cool. up in the world after we fired that NASL sound guy. Making a career, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for joining in, guys. Uh, hope you had fun. Uh, we improvised quite a bit on the spot because it was a busy week for all of us. Um, I think it, it's safe to say we're definitely going to do it next Saturday as well. I really hope I can announce the guest either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow on the Pulse, perhaps, we can yes. announce uh, the guest. Yeah. Just got him. From what country? Nah, that's too nah, obvious. Too it's obvious. too obvious. Because if I say this, everyone will know who's From the what continent? Europe. All right. Another European player. And I, I can say it's safe to say it's an Eastern European player. Okay. Oh. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so we really hope you guys had fun. Please watch the polls tomorrow. And next week, uh, Mr. Bitter will be here. We're going to, like, tie him to the chair. We're going to strap his arms in <laughs> so he right. can move. <laughs> he is going to play some public games as well. Thank you very much for watching, and see you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Bye, guys.